Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about a problem that I tend to run into quite often, which is that I'll sometimes come across the beginnings of a new idea. And it's something that I know is important. I know I'm going to need a bit of time to explore the idea in the, in the depth that it requires. But I know that I don't have the time to do that right now. But this is an experience that I had a little bit earlier today and I kind of recognized that I uh, needed to uh, dig into this idea in a little bit more depth, but I was busy with something else and um, I didn't have a whole bunch of time. So this is the way that I try to capture um, enough information about the, this new concept um, or a problem that I want to explore without necessarily going into all the detail of, um, of, of actually doing the work. Um, but I set myself up so that the next time I have a little bit of time or, or I um, schedule a little bit of time, I'm not starting from scratch. It's also a way to make sure that I don't lose the, the germ, the seed of the idea. So it's really important that I can capture as much information um, as possible, relevant information as possible, um, as quickly as possible. All right, so I'm going to start just by um, showing you what I noticed and, and how things um, played out. So I was on Twitter this morning and I saw a tweet by Neil Selwyn. Um, uh, I know that Neil is someone who is quite critical about the use of technology in education. So I tend to pay attention to things that he talks about. And he tweeted about an, an article that um, has just been published. And he talks about, yeah, the main promises of data-driven education, um, etc., etc., remain incompatible with the entrenched bureaucratic and professional logics of mass schooling. So I thought that's really interesting. Um, ask Neil if he meant that, in principle, the way that we've set up schools means that we can't achieve the goals that we care about, and that this paper is a specific example of that principle. So he wrote back and he mentioned this um, uh, an essay written by a guy called Larry Cuban, who I'd never heard of saying computers meet classroom, classroom wins. I thought that's really interesting. I went to go look at the paper. Um, here's the, the article. Um, I made a few notes here on the side in Hypothesis. Um, and this definitely seems like something that I want to pay a little bit of attention to. And the, the idea basically is that um, we haven't seen disruption in education because of the introduction of technology, um, because the social structures or the infrastructure of um, educational systems is such that they tend to bend the technology towards their own purposes rather than the technology coming in and disrupting the system. So systems almost co-opt technologies to serve their purposes rather than the technologies changing the systems. I thought this is a very interesting idea and it's not something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about. All right, so I know that there's something going on here. And a little, little bit later, I saw another tweet by Ben Williamson, who also, similar to Neil Salwin, is quite um, critical about the use of technology in education. And he shared an article by Justin Reich, who um, is another person who I pay a lot of attention to. I mentioned that um, what uh, Ben was tweeting about seemed to be aligned with this paper that uh, Neil Selwyn had um, tweet, uh, tweeted. And I asked if these are saying the same thing, that the structure of the system influences the technology rather than the other way around. So uh, Williamson tweeted something else, and I saw this is a, a tweet by Dr. Stephanie Moore, who I don't know, talks about the organizing purposes of systems. And so I realized there's something here. So I went to go have a look at this article. And this one. and this one. And I realized that there's quite a lot going on here that I haven't really come into contact with before. I needed to capture this um, and move on with my day. So the first thing I did was that I put all of these into Zotero. So there's the article, Failure to Disrupt. Computers Meet Classroom, Classroom Wins by Cuban. Uh, danger we get too robotic this is the article by Selwyn and then uh, a book and two articles by um, Reich 
So I've captured all of this information into Zotero. I need somewhere to put it. So I can highlight all of them. I'll create a bibliography from those items. I use APA. And I'm going to put them into Visual Studio Code. Now, Visual Studio Code is not something that I've mentioned before, but I've been experimenting over the last six months or so with writing in plain text first. And I've been using VS Code as a markdown editor to do that work. So I'm going to start off just by saying there are some references that I might want to think about. This is just, I don't need to be doing this formatting, but I'm just putting it there for now. I know that those tweets um, were things that I want to pay attention to. So let me go back here. I'm going to take this tweet by Selwyn. Say, yeah, uh, the tweet is from Neil Selwyn. Twitter. Let me get that URL. Now this is just uh, some markdown editing. You don't need to pay any attention to this unless you're also using markdown. Um, nothing else there that I want at the moment. So I can close that. I've already captured this in um, uh, Zotero. I've taken this information and I've captured it as a note in Zotero. So at the moment, I don't have the whole article, but I've got enough. The tweet by Williamson, I'm going to capture this as well. Actually, you know what? This is not actually Williamson. Williamson is quoting Justin Reich's article from here. Twitter. Okay. Justin Reich, actually, it's not from Twitter. Is that article? Now I'm going to go through this. You can see I've started. I've mentioned that um, from the title, Why Educational Technologies Haven't Transformed the College Experience. This is similar to what Larry Cuban was saying in 1992. Computers meet classroom, classroom wins. That's 1992. That's a long time ago. So anyway, I've started working on this. I'm going to go through this. It's an interview with Justin. And he talks about this new book that he's published called Failure to Disrupt. I've captured this in Zotero as well, Failure to Disrupt. There's the book. At some point, I'll start adding tags, but that's not necessary at the moment. So I can close this. I also found this um, a YouTube video where Justin is talking about the book. You can see it's an hour and 15 minutes long. So I don't have the book, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be able to get something out of this YouTube video. So the YouTube video is captured here as well. I think it's in this presentation. So yep, there's the YouTube video. Now what I would normally do is I would open a note, set up my note system over here. And as I'm watching the video, I'm going to make notes in Zotero and I've Got another video that I've published um, previously where I talk about how I capture notes from videos. All right, so at some point I'll work through that. And then with these three articles, I'm going to use Hypothesis to make notes and then take those notes and put them into Zotero as well. Oh, I just realized there was a tweet from Stephanie Moore that I want to capture. talks about systems. The organizing purpose of the system aligns the new thing with the system's motion and energy. I thought that's quite a nice quote and I'm going to put that in here as well. Say Stephanie Moore from 
Twitter. And I'm going to link that as well. Right. I've given this the heading systems domesticate technology. Um, I'm going to say um, reason that technology hasn't disrupted education is because education is a complex system with complex behaviors and the system is more likely to co-opt the technologies that are introduced rather than the technologies changing the system. All right, that's not too bad. So you can see what I've done here is I've, um, I've created a, a new note and I've created this under my blog. Um, so I'm probably going to write this up as a blog post. But I think this is quite an important concept and not really something that I've thought about very much um, in the past. I think it explains a lot about some of the challenges that we face in higher education and why technologies don't have the effect that we think that they're going to do. If we just think about MOOCs, when MOOCs first came out, everyone was just talking about how the arrival of MOOCs we'd also see the demise of higher education institutions. I think some people went so far as to say that by 2020, we would have no more universities. And universities have not changed at all, other than universities creating MOOCs in their own image. So if we look at what MOOCs were supposed to do, if we look at the original conception of MOOCs as proposed by Stephen Downs and George Siemens, um, they were very different to the kind of MOOCs that we are actually seeing in practice now. And so I think that is a really good um, specific example of this principle. Um, so maybe I should add that here. Um, if we look at how MOOCs, it's actually X MOOCs have been implemented. They're far more like traditional universities than CMOOCs, i.e. the university was not disrupted by the technology, rather the technology was, I'm going to say, bent to the will of the institution. All right, so if you look over here, it takes this plain text format and it outputs something that could be converted to HTML or a PDF. What I'll do is once I've written up this article, I'll be able to export this as a HTML and just dump it into my blog. But you can see what I've done is I came across an interesting idea, uh, which then kind of prompted me to find uh, another example of that same idea. I gathered a few resources. I collected those resources into Zotero. So here is this collection of resources. Um, I use this uh, tool called Zotello called, uh, to relate these items. So even if these get split up, if I come here to the related tag, I can see that they're all related. And all of these items are linked to this text file, which is the beginning of this idea that, you know, yesterday I hadn't really thought about. And now I can close it all up um, and I can move on. It's the start of this idea, the collection of resources, my original thoughts, a few tweets, and now I can move on with my day. And so that whole thing has taken me maybe, you know, 10, 15 minutes. The next time I want to put some work into a blog post, I've got the beginnings of a post right here and it'll take me another 15, 20 minutes to bash this out. And once I've done that, then I'll start pulling out specific atomic ideas, so discrete concepts from this post, and I'll start adding them into my permanent node system. And those are the kinds of things that I'll then query when I want to start writing articles and introduce some of these concepts into the articles. 
All right, so that's it. Um, I hope that you thought that was useful. Um, it's it's a problem that I experience quite a lot, which is, you know, coming into or coming across a new idea, wanting to capture the essence of that idea before I move on with other tasks for the day, not having time to dig into the idea in more depth, and that's how I go about capturing a, a few basic resources to um, to dig into in more depth when I have a little bit of time uh, at some point in the future. If you have a different system or a different approach to capturing information about new ideas quickly, I'd really like to hear about it in the comments um, or whether or not you just thought that this was useful. That'll be also great to get that feedback. Thanks very much. Bye.